Okay, so we have a new build of Manjaro, and this is Munker Phoenix Jaro XP. Uh, and this, I'm excited about this one, so let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so the reason I think this build is exciting is that uh, Munker, who makes some great Raspberry Pi builds, and also Asir, who created Phoenix Linux, have got together and uh, they've created this Munker Phoenix Jaro XP. Hard to say, but uh, it, it is great. It works really well. So to get logs in, you want to put in Phoenix and Munker, all in lowercase. So if you type in Munker on my channel, uh, you'll find there's several videos that I've done and uh, mostly about gaming. He tends to put all the different gaming systems that are available in there and they work incredibly well. But also if you put in Phoenix, uh, you'll find that uh, there's really, really good YouTube performance and really snappy operating systems. So to bring those two elements together is what we have here. And the web browser is excellent. So let's close that down and let's just test the video first keep the sound low uh, so this is well i'm actually running the desktop at 720 because i want to show a lot about games but even at 1080 with the desktop uh, the performance is excellent with the browser so if i do stats for nerds uh, you can see 1920 by 1080 it always drops a few frames at the start but you can see from now on it will be maintaining almost completely uh, and it, it is very, very impressive. I haven't overclocked yet. I wanted to have a look at overclocking. Uh, so let's quit out of that. So I like the little touches of the penguin on the top of the hill here and also on the start button. Uh, I like all the folders and the navigation, and everything like that. Uh, so if I go down to the start bar and we go to accessories, you can see we've got ClamTK, which is a scan for threats. We've got, uh, I think that's GNOME Disks, uh, which is a way of backing up your SD card. So there's various different options in here to uh, create disk images and so on. Open Android screen mirroring system, Raspberry Pi Imager, which is my favorite method of writing images on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, view images, password, uh, text editor, screenshot option, and also an unzipper. So we've got Amiga emulator with Amiberry, which I've been using recently in PyMiga, which has been brilliant. Uh, the Dolphin emulator, which works really well on this. Uh, we've got DOSBox for Windows games. We've got a games option which you can add and have a collection where they're all together. Game Boy Advance, PlayStation Portable, Redream, RetroArch, which is all fully installed, SNES emulator, Nintendo Game Boy Advance, and Wine configuration and Wine desktop. So this is your, your Windows side of it. Under Internet, there's some interesting things here. So Chromium Docker is a way of using Netflix and Spotify uh, in the browser on this 64-bit operating system. Obviously, there's a different way of doing it with Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, they use a virtual machine to do this, uh, which allows you, well, you can see here, Netflix, Amazon, and Spotify are supported within that. Uh, and if I launch it, you'll see that it does it a bit differently. I've covered this separately. So we know the password is Phoenix Munker. And then this launches this browser in a virtual machine and then allows you to use those DRM services on the Pi. So let's close that one down. We don't need that now. But you can see here as well, Discord is supported. Firefox and Chromium are on there. Uh, I find that Chromium seems to be the best one of all of them I've tried on this. Uh, so we've got a BitTorrent client there. Connect to remote desktops, Telegram desktop, Tor web browser. Uh, it did say in some of the README files that I did read that the Tor web browser doesn't work as fast. Looks like this is working in a virtual machine as well. So that would be why Chromium would work faster. Well, it looks like it's trying to install something or set something up. So obviously people use this as a very secure web browser. It's not something I use, but uh, it's nice to have that option. So it looks like it's just installed it, but I think I probably need to click on it again because it doesn't seem to be booting on its own. So let's try that, Tor Browser. Yeah, so here, look, so we've got Configure and uh, how we want to do that, and also Connect option as well. But I'm not going to do that. So it's not something I really cover. And also YouTube Buddy, uh, and this is quite a cool program. Uh, so you can do a search. Uh, so if we just do a search for Lee PSP video, I wonder what it will come up with first. So it comes up with RetroPie at the top, so let's click on that and let's hit play. And it launches VLC and plays within VLC, which is a, a different way of doing it, but it's nice to see. So under Office, we've got Abbey Word and Atrial Document Viewer. Uh, some programming options there. Sound and video, quite a few bits on there. There was something about audio. So it says change the pulse audio equalizer preset to hear clearer sound. 
and system tools, all your usual stuff. So this is your application, so this is how you install things onto it. And there's also an updater, although it didn't seem to work for me before, uh, but also things like NeoFetch is in there, uh, Gparted is in there. So NeoFetch will show me that I'm not overclocked at the moment. You can see here, look, Phoenix Linux 2021, Monk of Lights. Uh, 1.5 gigahertz so yeah I need to have a look at that overclock let's do that now so let's open a terminal obviously overclock at your own risk and you want to type in sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot text pop your password in and we can go down here and see if there's anything that's already filled in yeah so that we've got so I generally use an over voltage of 8 uh, and I use 2147 but let's go for 22 today I'm not using any active cooling on my Pi. Uh, and the graphics I don't think makes much difference, so I'm not gonna bother doing that. Uh, and I'm gonna leave all the other settings. So Control O, Enter, Control X. And let's reboot. So let's check that with NeoFetch, which was in here. System Tools, NeoFetch. So now it's showing us 2.2 gigahertz. Just show you that web browser and how snappy it feels. Uh, it really was fast. So hot UK deals and BBC. Let's go back to that. Open the page. Open the BBC one. And it just feels nice and fast. Very impressive to use on the Pi. So let's go along the bottom here. Uh, so we've got Launchpad or launcher as it's known. Uh, and this is a way you can basically launch apps and see what's on there as well. Uh, so we can flick through and we can see various things that are on there. But if we wanted to search for something, say something like Gparted, you can see it comes up. If we type in WM, we get Wine Configuration, Wine Desktop and Redream for some reason. Um, but, uh, but that's nice to see and it's a nice quick way to search for things. Hit Escape to come out of that. Uh, this just calls up the folders and all the navigation and everything. Everything seems to work well there. For some reason, my uh, network doesn't, uh, it doesn't recognize my NAS drive, and I do get this. I think I always get this with Manjaro, and you've got to configure it separately, but some other operating systems just see it straight off the bat, which is nice. So we've got uh, Manjaro Settings Manager here. You can see Chromium, Firefox, Terminal, uh, Pulse Audio Equalizer, Bluetooth Settings, and also Iconify all Windows. So let's have a look at some games. Um, I've actually uh, lowered the overclock setting because Wine wouldn't launch. So if I go into, what was it, System Tools and NeoFetch, it will actually show us two gigahertz now and uh, an over voltage of six I'm using. Uh, just that when I changed it to the overclock of two, two uh, and eight, Wine Desktop just launched and then quit straight out. So I thought, oh, I'll try getting rid of the overclock got rid of the overclock and now uh, it works fine. Uh, I don't know why, very, very strange. So I've got virtual tennis in here. Uh, so if I double click in that folder, uh, this is a Windows program, an old Windows program. So if I look for the exe file, there's a configuration one here. And uh, I'll do it with keyboard. I did try and set it up with my controller but couldn't get it to work. Uh, so video set up, so it's on the lowest resolution, low detail effects off 16-bit and best performance that's the uh, settings that I saved before so run virtual tennis and hopefully this overclock will make it a bit faster all the menus seem nice and fast I'm only using cursors and keyboard at the moment which isn't ideal it still looks like it's gonna be a bit slow oh that was a bit of a lob oh nice Better. I do like this game. Um, played, it does work better on other systems, but uh, it's still playable. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> nice. So let's try something else. I'm using my Xbox controller and uh, I've got the dongle, USB dongle in there. So it works as a wireless Xbox controller and it's very compatible, though I couldn't get it to work with virtual tennis. So let's try GameCube. Okay, so start, games, and Dolphin Emulator. Open, and this is the best I've ever had Dave Mirror working on the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, so all these settings, well, I haven't really changed any settings within the Dolphin Emulator to see if I can tweak it anymore, but it is nearly playable. It's slow, um, but it is nearly playable. Uh, some other games definitely run better than this. 
Unfortunately, the sound's gone proper weird. So generally I get graphical errors uh, and really bad slowdowns, but actually this is, well, it's still pretty slow, uh, but this is by far the best I've ever seen it running on Pi. Uh, this version is, is excellent, and uh, it's one of my favorite games of all time. So let's go out and try something else. Actually, let's just try and get the audio working because it there is a thing in the README about changing the pulse audio settings because you can hear the sound is really weird at the moment. So let's just click on that pulse audio and it just said to change a setting. Let's try a different game just to show that it does run GameCube pretty well. So something like Hulk, which runs nicely. Oh, the sound's come back now. Oh, maybe it just doesn't like that game. There you go. So you can see, I think from a speed point of view, this game seems to be running pretty well. It's certainly enjoyable to play. Let's crush that car, shall we? <laughs> anyway, let's quit out of that and try something else. PSP. Oh, a bit steep. But you can hear the sound is working fine on that now. Let's try something else. And GTA Vice City. Yeah, it seems to be coping fine. Whoa. Not quite what I meant to do. Let's go this way this time. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Now this has got Vulcan in it. It might be worth having a look. Uh, so, back end. Yeah, see, last time I tried Vulcan it wasn't better. Um, so let's see what happens. So this is with Vulcan. Oh, it's, it does seem pretty smooth actually. I'm not getting the occasional, you get an occasional glitch with OpenGL where it kind of just momentarily just pauses. It doesn't affect the gameplay badly. But I'm not getting that. It's actually it's actually smooth. Oh, let's try pumping up some settings then. Okay, so frame skipping is off, so we've got that if we need it. Uh, but let's just try rendering resolution times two. Just tends to look a lot crisper. Okay, so you see it looks a lot better, but it's it's uh, it's struggling with that. So let's try frame skip, as as the advice came on screen. Let's just do auto frame skip and see what happens. Twenty nine thirty, not bad. I would still I would still not run it two times uh, because it is still affecting it. But it's nice to see Vulcan is definitely improving. Yeah, happy with that. And let's try uh, Dreamcast, which is, I think I've got one game on here. Okay, let's have a look. Add a directory, and it's desktop. And ROMs. There you go, Sega GT. Oh, yeah, feels all right. See if we can put FPS on. Yeah, we've got a solid 60 FPS at 720 resolution. Happy with that. And this is on drift. Let's see if we do drift. Not yet. Oh, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have picked drift mode. There you go. So that seems to be working all right anyway. And the last thing I was going to try uh, was a bit of RetroArch, which is in here. So this was already set up. Uh, all I've done is import the, the folder from the desktop. And it's picked up 
N64 and GameCube. The GameCube doesn't seem to launch, so if I click on that, so if I pick a game from GameCube, uh, so say for instance, Smuggler's Run, I think this didn't work before. Uh, so there you go, you can see various different things are already on there, NEC, PC Engine, GameCube, Stroke Wii, Sega Dreamcast, Master System, Game Gear, Mega Drive, Sega CD, Sega Saturn, and 3DO. So let's go for GameCube, but I don't think this is going to work. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work on that. Um, but N64 worked, so let's try that. And it was running a little slow before, but I was running it at 1080 when I tried it. So hopefully 720 will make the difference. You can always drop the resolution even further. And usually N64 on the Pi, people do go lower than 720. So I'm gonna see if I can lower the resolution because it already seems a bit slow. I'd say not bad speed, but not great. Okay, so I've restarted because uh, the 320 hadn't taken effect. And my B button is X for some reason, uh, but I'm sure that won't affect it. Uh, but uh, I've also applied Vulkan. So there's Vulkan for N64, and this does seem to be working much better now. I'm still getting that same thing where every now and then the sound goes a bit strange, switching between apps and changing the equalizer preset does seem to work. It does seem to be the fix for now, uh, but hopefully there'll be something better in the future. Oh yeah, that's much better. So I noticed on uh, a lot of RetroPie, uh, a lot of the builds where they sort of apply the settings for you and everything, uh, they tend to go for 320 on the resolution. Yes, it looks a bit ragged, but you are getting full, uh, full resolution gameplay and it looks, full speed gameplay, and it looks really, really good. I don't know if you can jump up on there, you probably can somehow. Oh, you're supposed to go all the way around, are you? But this is quite a cool game. I've never really properly played it through. Uh, and I don't, there must be a, a look around option here. What is it? So I've got, oh, I've got that, which can spin me around. Oh, okay. Well, that kind of works. There's probably a better way of doing this. What does the uh, other trigger do? Oh, the other trigger kind of centers you. Yeah, so it centers your aim. If you see the push icon, you can run into an object and push it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this is a cool game. And running brilliantly now. Okay, so I think that's enough for the games. To turn on the Vulcan, uh, what I did was, uh, if you, you probably have to exit out of this. So I've quit out of RetroArch. So if you go into RetroArch, so go to settings, video, and then output, and that's where I changed it to Vulcan. But also I've changed the resolution down to 320, but that made all the difference and N64 played brilliantly. So if you go to the Phoenix Linux site, and you can select your language here, loads of options. So as we scroll down, you can see Munker Fenix Jaro is there and all the downloads are below. So if you click on the download, it will take you to a page that tells you a bit about it as well. So I think I mentioned it was 64 bits and I think I mentioned uh, 300 megabyte of RAM, which is very, very low. And here's the bugs and tips. So the uh, change in the pulse audio, which I've been doing throughout the video, Chromium and Firefox are a little faster than Chromium Docker and Tor Browser, I mentioned that. Anbox has been removed, uh, so that might be so. So Android support in a in a newer release possibly. Uh, you, I've mentioned the password. It's compatible with the Pi three. I never really cover the Pi three, but the Pi three and three plus are covered by it, as well as the four and the four hundred. I've actually switched over to the four hundred, sort of halfway through this video, to try and sort out the audio glitches. But it was the same sort of thing. So great work by the guys. Uh, they've done a really good job with this. I really do like it, and I'll definitely be keeping it on an SSD for a while. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.